All right, so I decided that uh, having done some of this promotional work for um, Super Humatoma, I've been working on some illustration -y stuff. It's got lots of characters that I've been throwing in. And uh, it's not completely finished yet, but the, the final product is going to be somewhat similar to this, I believe. Uh, but I thought I'd do a quick tutorial and illustrate how I've been doing the coloring for these. Uh, not, I know not everyone really uh, has much Photoshop experience, so I thought I'd show some of the tricks to coloring a hand-drawn image. So, uh, we've got a couple things loaded in here by default. Um, and we've first got the pencil drawing that I've done, uh, where you can see that I've got some hints of where shading should be and the overall drawing and whatnot. And then I actually inked that uh, on paper. Boom. And so I inked that with the pen and then scanned the two images. And we're going to use the lines and we're just going to use this as a guide when it comes to shading. Um, there's other ways you, you could color, but the way that I'm going to color is using the mouse. Um, and we're going to do kind of some cartoony images out of this. So we're going to start off, um, I've got this, and the first thing that we need to do is separate the lines out. So if I select, I, I thankfully did a fairly good job when scanning this of, of getting some nice contrast in here. Um, you can see there's little specks like right here there's this little dot. I'm actually not concerned with getting any of these little specks in here. Um, I'm trying to get a very on paper look to it so little uh, artifacts here and there don't bother me. Um, and you can see another one little down here. So I'm gonna go up and select similar and then you can see that this is going to select all of the white in the image. And now that I've done that, I can press Control shift i to invert my selection. And then I can put down a new layer, and I can uh, add a layer mask. And now I don't really need to worry about these lines ever again. Uh, now the benefit of doing that is I can come in here and actually let me select here, you can see here that I, the, the t top of the image is actually still um, included in the mask, so I'm going to paint that black in the mask. Actually, let me undo that first and I'll show you what it would have looked like. Uh, so I'm going to do black lines, and this gives me nice pure black lines, except it's still going to give me the anti-aliasing. And so part of the reason that I did that, uh, so that I don't jump too far ahead, is that your scan is going to have all these uh, atrocious colors everywhere. And you could just go in and make that uh, desaturated down to, to black or whatever. But I prefer to have it this way as a mask because I can come in here with this mask should I so desire and I can get a different color. Uh, instead of using these toggles you can press X to switch colors, B to go to the brush tool. Um, I can come in here and very easily color these lines should I so desire. And that's something I haven't necessarily decided yet as to whether I'm going to do with this particular image. Um, but it's an option. So uh, I can come onto the mask layer and select this and I will paint it out. And now we have our line art is nicely separated onto its own layer and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these into a group. Uh, you can press control G, lines, and we'll move that on up to the top. I'll set this to a multiply and uh, that's just preparing for down the road later. But for the time being I'm going to leave this off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up an action here. If you're not familiar with actions, it's your own custom room keyboard shortcuts for doing things. Uh, so I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to start coloring the flesh first probably. But in the meantime, I'm going to set up an action. And so what I want to do for that is I'll create a new set, uh, Sam. Uh, we'll call this painting cartoons 
And that's just because I want to easily delete this from my existing stuff later. Uh, but we've got painting cartoons and we're going to create an action and in order to call this action we have to use some combination of something that doesn't already exist um, so all these already exist so I'm just going to use uh, I'm going to use something that's not F4 so I'm going to use shift F4 uh, and whenever I press shift F4 it will call the sequence of events that I'm about to do so what I want to do because this is a nice um, a, a nice uh, cartoony image that I'm going for with lots of flat colors is I want to do cell shading for this so I can press W to go to the wand tool and so let's record this action I'm going to select something uh, actually no sorry wait let's not do that um, setting the selection will not be part of the action so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select something and now I'm going to begin recording so we are recording and you can see that while I've selected this and I've got a pretty low tolerance on here um, I could probably up that just a little bit uh, let's actually set that tolerance I think the default is something like 32 um, so that works just a little bit better to, to get in stuff, but you can see that it's not going to play nice with all the anti-aliasing that we've got going on here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to record this action and we're going to go up to select, modify, expand, and we're going to tell this to expand by maybe three pixels. We've got lots of detail in here. This is scanned at like 300 dpi. So we're going to scan, increase our thing by like 300, or by, sorry, by three pixels. And now you can see that our outline is uh, intersecting with our line art. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Alt Backspace. And that's going to fill using my foreground color here that's been chosen. So if I stop recording, uh, I yeah, let's just stop recording. So now what I've got is I've got a tool where I can easily select anything. Select, press Shift F5, boom, and this will select anything. This is obviously not what I want the skin color to be, but this is now what we have for a tool. And so... Uh, so that's the process of setting up this action. I'm actually very used to using uh, shift. All right, I've got these all turned off right now. Boom. So I've actually I'm actually very used to using uh, Control F2 right now. That's what I've been using to doing to doing all these. Um, if you've never set up actions before, you'll probably be able to. And I don't have to do just one at a time. Uh, I could do multiples. You can hold shift while selecting stuff. Control F2. Um, so if you've never set up any actions before, you can probably set something up that's a little bit more simple. Um, I've already got a ton of actions in existence, so it's starting to require me to use modifiers like control and shift. Um, but let's just delete this layer and now that we have an action going let's start this coloring process so um, I've already done a lot of work as far as like choosing palettes goes I've done some tests with skin colors on while actually designing the sprites uh, maybe you want to have a bunch of reference photos brought up um, but I know roughly the colors that I'm going for right now so I'm going to just wing it after doing this base selection. So I'm going to use I to go to the eyedropper tool and do some coloring and I'm going to select a skin tone. I'm going to I'm going to color from lights to darks. So I'm just going to color all the light stuff first and then I'll come back and do the shadows afterwards. So I select this color I'm going to hide this and now I'm going to do all the skin. So if I go back to the magic wand and I select everything here that is skin, boom, I'm just selecting all the skin. 
now I can press my action to do that. I'm coloring on a different layer that is underneath my lines. And let's just get that. We missed. And we're going to name this. And so another thing that I like to do is it can be kind of tricky to make sure that everything is working nicely when you're using this uh, black and white checker pattern. So I'm actually just going to come in here and I'm going to choose a fairly neutral gray tone here. And actually, let's just choose this 50%. Yeah, let's just choose this. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to dump down this color just so that I can easily recognize when stuff's happening. Actually, you know what? Let's even press Control U and we're going to give this a little bit of color just because. Um, so I know actually I want her to have like reds. So let me just go with something that is not red just so that we've got something to contrast with. Okay, so if we zoom in, you can, I have a habit of using control and uh, the plus minus here to zoom. Um, other people, you can uh, press the space bar and control and you can zoom in and out like this. Um, it's really just a matter of what you're used to, I guess. Uh, but I like the control plus minus. It gives me nice even zooms at 300%, 400%, etc. And then you can also use control 1 and 0 if you want to fit the whole thing in or zoom in to 100%. Um, but if we zoom in and take a look around, we just want to make sure that we have hit all the colored spots that need to be colored on this. Uh, for example, all in here, this is actually supposed to be flesh with like a mesh over top of it. So in this sample, I'm going to uh, select that again. And I'm going to use my brush. And I'm just going to manually paint this in. So you can increase the brush size using uh, these the square brackets that are at the right side of the keyboard here. But I accidentally colored the spot that I didn't mean to, but that's fine. I'm just going to fill this all in and press E to erase that little bit. Uh, just make sure that this is all done. Everything else is probably going to be fine here, but I just like to make sure that I don't have any gaps. Okay, so that's all good. So we've got uh, a, skit, a flesh tone down. Uh, I'm going to do some white colors here, I guess. Um, I probably want the teeth and this little band here that I've got under the glove. And probably the socks are going to be a whitish color. So let's do that and come in and choose a color I'm going to lean towards it being a bluish color and let's select our shit again pardon my linguistics Bam. Um, and so I'm actually gonna leave these lines here that it go through the hair I'm just gonna leave those and color them whatever the color is that I do for the hair um, let's do this one white as well. And you can see that that's more bluish than I was hoping for, so I'm going to lighten that up. And that's probably good there. It's got a hint of color to it, it's not pure white. And now I'm going to do the hair. Let's correct the spelling on this because I like to do that. Hair, we select boom, 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 boom. Oh. So we can zoom in. 
and that is now all selected for the hair and we can color that control of two and I actually don't want this to be that color so I'm going to open up the hue saturation I, I do this a lot um, I find it hard to use the color picker uh, you can you can see a large variety of colors here all at once, but it's hard to. I don't know. I, I I'm just not as fond of this. So I'm gonna just open this up. I'm gonna colorize it. I'm gonna go with like a minty color for the hair. So let's let's go with something like that for now. And now I'm going to do the top, which is going to be kind of a saturated red color. I'm going to make the gloves the same color. Um, I'm just getting used to this new shortcut. I actually do like it, but I'm not quite used to using this one yet. The, the space and control and then dragging the mouse to zoom. Uh, just base control drag out. So that is. Oh, and I'm gonna want the shoes colored as well. So let's make these a control U colorize. Let's make these a nice red color. Now, normally, like I said, normally you probably want to have reference stuff up here to choose your colors from especially if this it's going to go with other things but at least to start off with I've got no problems doing this that's probably could be a little I actually want it to be quite red it's probably good for the light colors okay so we'll go with that um, and now uh, eyedropper tool select that um, depending on what version of Photoshop you're using, I think, I don't remember how it is. You can actually hold down Alt to do colors while you're on the brush. You don't have to hit the eyedropper. I just get flustered a little bit because it's been a long time since I've done a video tutorial. Um, and I'm just kind of winging this. So... We're just going to make sure again that this is catching all of the areas here that we want colored. There's going to be lots of areas here. And actually this stuff here is probably going to be in shadow, so it's a little bit redundant to do this, but whatever. Dun, dun, dun. So, I don't know, I, if I'm doing like painterly stuff, I, I really enjoy using a tablet for that, but if I'm doing cartoony stuff or pixel art, I'm just so used to the mouse that it ain't no thing. Is that colored correctly? It looks like it is. Okay, so now we have, oh. Uh, so for this, I actually meant to make the glass part the same white color. So you, you can see how long that took me. It would get tedious doing that, which is why... Whoop. Which is why I prefer having that shortcut. Every now and then it fails on me. I'm not completely sure what Photoshop's deal is. Uh, so the eyes, I might actually make the eyes green. Uh, I've been green or complementary, so um, let's select this green, but actually let's, uh, let's brighten that just a little. Uh, make a layer for the eyes. Color these in. And, oh, I missed a spot on the top. And that looks good now. 
Let's do the skirt. Select that. Select that. And control F2. And I actually don't want this whole thing to be red. So let's come in here and let's actually darken this down a little bit and let's actually shift this towards being uh, screw it, let's colorize uh, let's shift this towards being a more purpley color so we'll darken it um, and remember I'm going to do the shadows later so this should still all be somewhat bright let's do it something like that that looks good to me so there we go, there's a very basic thing. Um, and you know, I, I kind of refined this process a little bit doing uh, hand-drawn animation back in the day. And you could actually do a very similar process and depending on what you're doing, when I started making the action, um, I had by default included these selections in there. Um, you could actually do that where you, if, you, if you're doing multiple frames of animation, you could actually like include the selection process in your action. And uh, as long as your character's not moving wildly across the field of view, you could actually automate quite a lot of the coloring that, that way. But we're not doing animation, so I digress. All right, okay, so we've still got that. Um, so I might actually, I want that to be kind of a golden chrome color. Uh, those don't work, golden metal. Uh, gold, metal, uh, and we will make it somewhat similar to... I guess we can just kind of use this color. So view original image and so this is what I'm talking about where we can oh, come on. Let's take a different piece of metal. Let's take some actual gold. View original image. Save as save to desktop. Boom, and we'll go to the desktop. There's a photo I took in Vancouver. Go back here and slide that in, press enter. And we can put these two items here. Control G into a reference group. We can put all this stuff into Control G into a uh, bright colors. Uh, let's add a space in there and also be Canadian colors. So I'm going to select a brighter color, probably this yellow. Uh, double click. Uh, goggles. Let's hide the reference. Color that. Control F2. What? Why didn't that select the color that I wanted? I. Oh, right. I wasn't in the eyedropper tool. Or was I? Yellow. Okay, that looks good. Let's put that away and try this all over again. Color that. Control F2. There we go. So, we've now got a very base color done, but now I'm going to do the shadows, and the process really isn't a whole lot different. Uh, I'll create a new folder, and we'll call it shadows, and we'll call up the reference of the gold, for example, and we will choose a darker color, maybe something like this orangey color right there. And create a new uh, set for the goggles. And so this is part of the reason why I've kept this around on another layer is this gives us a guide of what I want the shadows to be like. And so if we zoom in here, I actually did a pretty piss poor job of uh, 
selecting what this is going to be. So what I want to do is I'm just going to create like a, a bit of a flat lip around here and then everything else is just going to be uh, this darker color. So let's get rid of our lines and let's uh, let's start drawing our color. And if it's not completely perfect in the first attempt, you just go in there with the eraser and polish it up a little. And boom. And so that's not too bad, actually. Let's do the same over here. Probably needs to be slightly thinner. Let's erase that a splotch and let's improve over here. Oh, that's working foul. So if you were Yeah, why is this line so hard for me to do? Um so if you had thought ahead, you could potentially uh, have yourself some lines drawn for all of the spots that you want to have a two-tone shading and uh, you could actually do the exact same process that we had just illustrated before where you select the areas and fill like that but um, what's the fun in that? So, um, I'm gonna duplicate this layer just because um, and let's go in here and actually erase out some of this so that we can get some sort of uh, shiny look to it. Like this has some shininess to it, like this stuff that we're not getting, these streaks. And I'm not being particularly scientific here. Um, getting stuff that looks good is all going to be practice, which I haven't done in a long time, so let's do a straight line and some more straight lines. And let's, oops, let's have the these end. Uh, erase. So all I'm doing is I'm just using the eraser tool here, and then you can. Close that up with some nice kind of sharper lines there. Uh, so let's just leave that. Uh, it could probably use some more refinement, but uh, I'm not particularly concerned with that right now. So we've got some goggles, and let's add some flesh color now. Uh, flesh. And I have some reference. I believe I chose this one. I select the darker color, get rid of my reference, and let's turn this on. I didn't mean to drag that. And so now where I've got these purple lines, I'm going to start coloring in at the darker color. And every now and then I may want to turn this off because I can still uh, get some areas like this that I can do in one fell swoop like that and but let's turn this back on and start 
fine crafting this stuff. So, B, uh, this is all covered by mesh. And I'm just going to color this all the darker color. still recording and okay so now we've got some spots like this where I'm just going to trace along we've drawn that and that gives me this spot and let's do the same over here let's get some Get some shadow right here. And I should actually have a hmm. I wasn't completely clear with these drawings when I started off. So we're gonna just kind of do that and then I'm actually gonna do the knuckles as well I just want those knuckles to have some light maybe that's gonna look atrocious um, that probably looks pretty bad. Let's just fill the whole thing in dark. Or let's not color this section. Yeah, that probably looks better. So let's give it just a little bit of shadow. So, so that's some shadow from the thumb. We've got some color coming in here and coming across here. And then we can tidy this up a little. some nice sharp lines in there one a little bit on the shoulder and so this is pretty straightforward at this point like if you've got a drawing that you want to work with of your own um, I don't I'm not really going to cover anything that's new and exciting as I finish this it's just going to be a, an exercise in coloring Erasing whenever you can. Probably this is all going to get colored right here.
It's not very consistent, so let's do it more like that. And so, um, hmm, I don't like that thumb. Um, anyway, I'll refine that later. Um, and so this is kind of just the process of doing it here, is understanding a little bit of anatomy and how lighting works and practice. And I'm not being overly concerned with it because I'm going with this old fashioned style of image from the 80s and 90s where honestly not too many of the artists um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop talking before I come off of the snooty jerk uh, hmm. maybe that is maybe that's how it'll work um Okay, so we've got the tops and I've still got the leg. Uh, boom. So we've got, what's going on, B, not E. So anyway, uh, my point is I'm not being uh, a perfectionist with this. Um, I don't have uh, a very specific light source that I planned out. Uh, I'm basically just trying to do what I can to show off the 3D form, which is probably atrocious to speak of to some people, but that's the reality of this image. And this image is not a how to make your image the best image on earth tutorial. This is just a little bit of a look at the techniques that I'm using within Photoshop to color all this. Actually, maybe this should be colored. Since that is underneath the leg. Boom. Uh. 
Good enough. And now for the face. Actually, most of her face here is in shadow. So we've got some basic coloring done. So this is how I'm doing the, the two-tone pattern and uh, there is lots that could be improved upon on my actual drawing shoulder doesn't make me happy but we're gonna leave it and we're gonna move on to the next color which is going to be the red and so let's get a dark a darker shade of red something like that maybe like that and you know this uh, space control method for coloring really is awesome. I need to master it. And so we're just gonna finish this sh set of shadows. Uh, turn off that. I'm actually going to just leave that. It doesn't completely... Mm. I'm making creative decisions on here, on the spot. I'm not used to doing that while I'm trying to talk. Uh, so let's go over to the gloves. And... We want to maintain some of this highlight up here, and we want to maintain some sense of form over here. Let's just color all of that. It can be a little uh, tricky to tell what you're doing sometimes because of the lines underneath, but. That's why you need to turn that off and examine and just double check that it's all working the way you want. So. In my opinion, This is not as uh, contrasty as it could be, so I'm going to darken it just a little. 
There we go. And make sure to select this new color. Bam. Let's color the dress. And so what I find hard is that if you're not at perfect zooms, it can actually be a little tricky to be able to tell what your curves are doing. I don't like when there's straight lines. So that this probably needs more highlight over here. Probably good. Turn this on. This entire foot, I believe, is to be in shadow. This one... I feel like these are both just supposed to be in shadow. Um, so let's just do a block fill for these. And the benefit to having these on multiple layers is that if I change my mind, I can just easily come back in there and erase to get back some of the highlight. Ideally, I might still want to have a two-tone for this, but it might be an even darker color. And so let's do the white next. This is all arbitrary. I'm just choosing colors. And let's make this a little bit more of a light blue-gray color contrast against. Uh, turn that on. Actually, I don't really need that. Damn it. See, I don't really know why it messes up sometimes with those actions. That's Photoshop not operating as well as it should be. Um, yeah, why not? Let's add some shadow in here too. I haven't been adding shadows when doing characters' teeth. But there's no real reason I shouldn't. Uh, 
Yeah, let's just leave it like that. And we can add some shadow. Ideally, down on the goggles, I should add a little bit of sh a shadow. What's going on? Oh, goggles copy. I should actually add just a little bit of that golden color here as well. I don't know how noticeable it'll be, but I would prefer there to be a hint of it. just to help illustrate that it is a form that has dimension. Uh, and for the socks, I will add I'm probably going to add a little bit of a highlight here just because there should be some light hitting from the back maybe. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. I guess the light's hitting from in front. Yeah, I'm just going to flat color the socks. Oop, wrong color. I don't like how that's looking, so I'm going to add color down here. I'm going to do the same for the red. gives a hint that there's some light coming in here underneath the skirt, I guess. Works for me. Um, with leg, I'm actually not completely satisfied with this either. Let's do that, and I do like, I'm happy enough with how that looks. Uh, let's add the skirt. I come over here, choose a darker colors. Maybe that, maybe. Boom. So I know that I want some lines that follow this because it's almost like a skirt on top of a skirt. So I definitely want that line in all the way along. Oop. And probably the same up here. Now, actually, it's not going to be entirely the same, but we've got some darks along her body. Like that. And then the rest is going to have to be a little bit more careful. So let's come in here. Like so. It's like a pleated skirt. 
So we'll add some shadows in there to help give it some dimension. And we want a little bit of a curve. We want to help show off that there's a leg under there. So we're going to just add some dimension into this stuff like so. And like that. Da, da, da. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to color the next part on top of the next. Oh, there's no need. I have a habit of really wanting to work in layers, but it's not as necessary as I like to make it out to be. And so now we've got a hint of this skirt, and I'm actually going to tweak these lines a little. To help better illustrate that there is a leg under that skirt. Yeah, I think that works better. Okay, so that 
I'm kind of fine with that. Maybe this could be better. If we colored that like so. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Uh, and so now what's left is the hair. This color here is not doing it for me. Uh, let's desaturate that. Did I color that on the wrong layer? I think I colored that on the wrong layer. Shite. Where's that coming from? Red. Flesh. Googles. Goggles. Let's get rid of that and put that on the correct layer. You can nudge using the arrow keys. Make sure the image is where you want it to be. And let's desaturate this a little because Actually, maybe it's fine, maybe it just needs to be darkened. Yeah, I don't mind that. Maybe that's good. Okay, so let's add hair. Actually, let's just grab one of these. Oh uh, no, okay, turn that off. Let's get a darker hair. Maybe something like that will do the trick. stuff around these lines. Sometimes my lines just aren't working. Does that do the trick? that the 
the goggles are the probably the weakest part of it. I, I, I probably should have drawn those better. Um, but it is what it is. So let's clean up that and there's a skin. So we've got this uh, colored girl and so obviously you could go in and tweak colors around however you wish. Um, I might tweak this hair color a little. It might be a little too saturated. Um, but overall I'm not dissatisfied with this these colors so that's uh, that's my process for coloring these and then what I've been doing is bum, 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 we compile this into a new group that says leading lady and we can save and for example we could open up um, one of these finished images So what I do is uh, I, I drew all this stuff on paper first, just sketches, because there's I, I wanted something that's going to have a lot of characters. But it's sketches and sketches, and then I scan them and kind of position them in a, in a, a composition that I wanted. And um, scaled stuff up to the size that I needed to be, and then I took everything down to uh, FedEx Kinko's, I can't remember where, uh, and printed everything on an individual sheet of paper, and then did better paper drawings on top of the original sketches, and then I inked everything. And I did that so that everything would have a very consistent line weight. But I also did it because I liked the idea of having the option of having all these characters be a separate illustrator that could stand on their own. I didn't necessarily want to just do it as a single illustration because if I decided I didn't like any of the characters uh, it'd be harder to change if, if I wanted to just have a character by themselves for some potential use down the lines uh, it would mean extra drawings. So I did everything as a separate image but then what I do is oh man this is time consuming when you start working with large images. Um, so you can see I've got her and we've got this version. So I could just take all of this, bam, and drop it over here into this other illustration. And she's saved, so let's close her. And we've got this other illustration here that we can do stuff with. And uh, my color choices are kind of similar. Uh, obviously, I ended up doing some stuff different here. But that is a colored character and we slide her into place like so and she fits in with all the others and obviously this other stuff that I've been doing uh, I've just been taking paper textures and layering that in there to try and make it look less digital I wanted to kind of give it a marker on paper sort of look. And so there we go. Um, hopefully this was enlightening and enjoyable. And hopefully this game continues to delight. Uh, 
Cheers.